Hi everyone, I want to take a moment to talk about some frequently asked questions that I get literally all the time about the inner Mystic Ally Monk. So I have played this build quite extensively already. You might have seen my GR150 clear, that was the first in the world on Hardcore. I have farmed like 17-1800 Paragons in a few days until season start with mostly this Daibo speed setup that uh, I have made that you might have seen. And there are still a lot of like unclear things for a lot of people or something that confuses them. So I want to take some time to clear this up and maybe help you out on your own journey. This is not a full build guide. I've already made that before the season started. You can watch that. The link is in the description. There's also a max or written guide if you like. And I just want to go through it for people that already know the build and might want to optimize a few things. So in this video, I want to go through the push and the speed setups and also talk a little bit about the stat priorities, how to play them and also the solar shards. So let's go. This is my push setup right now. And one of the most common questions is definitely about cooldown reduction. So cooldown reduction is different depending on which setup you're playing. This here right now is my push setup. As you can see, I have Shenlongs, I have Convention of Elements. And the way you play this is that you have 20 second cycles to do one big explosion and then repeat. So for this, you need to have at least 33.33% 33 .33 cooldown reduction because this gives you 20 seconds on Mystic Ally. But this is the absolute bare minimum and I would recommend a little bit more. So a little bit more means maybe something like 35, 36 at least, which is actually something I could reach with just one roll, anti-enchantress, and then having a decent soul shot in the helm. If you have a worse roll in the cooldown reduction, then this might be a bit um, close, but you can do this with either one roll or two rolls. And you see like this, I have 36%. And this is kind of comfortable, but to make it a bit more smooth, I have another roll here, and this makes it much easier to handle. If you want to see more about how to push this build, I've actually done a full commentary of my GR150 clear, including how I play the rotation, when I press my buttons and all that kind of stuff. So if you haven't seen that yet, go check that out if you like. And let's move on to the speed setups. So I haven't set up my character yet, but we have them here in the Defuel Planner. So this is the Daibo speed setup that you might have seen already. I also made a video about this and this focuses a lot more on cooldown reduction. So typically when you start out with Inner Monk, you go with water allies and then you slowly transition to the, water, uh, to the fire ally. So water is still used in T16 and bounties and these kind of things. Or if you want to go really fast runs on a very low tier, if you are only after loot, if you want to farm super fast Hellforge Embers or um, ancient items or whatever. But in general, you can go at a really fast pace, even with the fire build, but generally like 10 tiers or so higher at least. And then the more you go towards like a pushing scenario, the better fire becomes to the point where it's like 25 tiers ahead or something. But for this, you want a lot of cooldown reduction to work because you want to constantly explode with your fire allies. So you see, for example, this Daibo setup here with Crimson, Essence of Anguish and Fragment of Destruction, which is the one I used to play most of the time. It has 80% uh, cooldown reduction when everything is active. So this is obviously a lot and you don't need that much, but this like makes it more smooth the more you have. So basically you want to roll cooldown everywhere, maybe not on the amulet because you have really good stats there, but the rings, the gloves, the weapon, the shoulders, you want to have the enchant enchanters maybe even, so you can have a lot of cooldown reduction. The alternative here is the um, Ingeum and uh, Aking Fury variant. So this is kind of like a standard variant where you have a bit less cooldown reduction usually, but you have the Messerschmitt and the Ingeum combo. So this uh, also gives you super fast resets on all your cooldowns, but you still want to roll cooldown as much as possible on every single item. Now, which of the two setups to choose? It is a bit up to you. So in general, this is like a standard variant here, but I know a lot of people really like this Di Daibo speed setup. The advantage here is that it's a bit more tanky than the um, Ingeum variant, as long as you run Orgils. So with Orgils, this variant is probably a little better in terms of speed farming potential, maybe a tier or two better, but it will be more squishy because you don't have this crimson damage reduction, you don't have to leave Hamburger in there and these kind of things. So this is kind of like um, difficult to play, a bit more high end, but works a bit better if you have like the full setup and you survive. With the Daibo, you have okay toughness, but you also have the essence of anguish in there that gives you increased damage taken. So it's also not super tanky. If you have some trouble with survival, then typically you want to maybe include more vitality to just get more toughness from the Paragons, for example, 
or you can include like a defensive passive. For example, here's Unity. Unity is not a super strong offensive passive in this setup, so you can easily replace this with something like Harmony or Sixth Sense and uh, maybe near death experience. The same with momentum here. So these two are not really required. They are kind of greedy choices and you can definitely sort them out. Here is the Shenlong speed variant. So this is kind of a hybrid between the push and the speed variants. So you have Shenlongs and a lot of cooldown reduction and the message with Reaver. To give you a little bit of a benchmark with this Daibo speeds variation, I have been able to speed farm GR 120 up to like 122 in maybe two minutes, 215 average. So this is kind of the pace you want to go at. You want to be pretty fast. And this was done with a non-ancient weapon at around 1700 Paragons. So obviously with an ancient weapon, you can boost this another one or two tiers. With some of the Paragons, you might be able to go a bit higher too. But this is what I have been doing here on my hardcore character. Obviously, you shouldn't just try hard to also go to OGR120 if it doesn't work for you. This also comes down to, for example, your Squirt's Necklace uptime, which gives you up to five tiers or so of efficiency. If you're not keeping your Squirt's Necklace very well, then you might have to lower the difficulty a little bit. You can also try to swap out the Gogok for a Molten Wildebeest to give you extra shields. And then you have the Serenity to protect it as well. So that might give you a lot more efficiency if uh, this gives you more squirts uptime. But in general, this is kind of like what you're shooting for. GR115, GR120, and then you can kind of like grind your way up from there with this Daibo setup. And then once you maybe swap to the Orgels plus uh, in Geomech and Fury combo, you can maybe go a bit higher. And finally, you have this Shenlong speed variant here that you can play as like the high-end version if you want to play around the Shenlongs that can probably go all the way to like around GR130 solo speeds. One important thing here about the Daibo setup is that it has the Essence of Anguish, so for this you need poison damage on your weapon to work. And this is mainly for this rank 3 effect that gives you the 50% extra poison damage. So this will only proc when you deal poison damage, which the game thinks happens when you have poison on your weapon. And this doesn't work with having poison damage just on the follower. The follower weapon, if you want to do that trick, is only for the stacks. So you can only get this movement speed and cooldown, but not the 50% poison damage. At least not reliably enough. For this Daibo setup specifically, there's also the Fragment of Destruction in the Helm, which essentially mimics a Messer Schmidt's Reaver because of this cooldown proc that you get. But you have to be careful with this, at least on Hardcore. I actually ripped one of my characters with this because this uh, life loss effect, if you don't kill something in 7 seconds, actually goes straight through all your cheat devs and kills you. So I wasn't aware of this when I made the setup and I actually died to this. And after that, I know that a lot of people kind of stopped using this on hardcore. It is probably extremely rare to actually happen, but it happened to me because of very unfortunate timing. If you want to see my rip clip, it's also down there. And it can kill you in very rare circumstances. For the other setups, you typically have a Drags of Lies with this stacking effect and rank 3. And you have a sliver of terror with the attack speed and crit chance. So attack speed and crit chance is very powerful as a rank 3 upgrade on a terror because typically you have 4 skills on cooldown. And this means you get 20% attack speed, 20% crit chance, which especially on dual wielding builds is very good. And the attack speed is also very good because it gives you more flying dragon procs, for example for the solo push variant. And also the attack speed as a whole is a multiplier to your damage done for the Mystic Allies. So this is actually massive. One thing I want to highlight here are also the affix ranges on your items. So especially the multipliers from Crudus Boots and the Bindings of the Lesser Gods. So very often people ask me something like, should I take an Ancient 185% over a non-Ancient 200%? The answer is usually no. So affix range matters a lot and the few stats that you get from a little bit of dexterity and maybe an augment is not really that crazy. This kind of matters maybe very early on when you're like Paragon 900 and you have like two augments on your gear and your total dexterity is like 10k, then yeah, the Ancient actually has a bit of an impact. But once you have like a better gear character and you're like at 15k, 20k dex or whatever, then you basically always choose the better affix, even if it's non-Ancient, unless it's very close. So let's say something like a 192 Ancient boot versus a 200 is maybe fine but not really more of the difference than that. If you're wondering what is the minimum requirement to push GR150, if this is like your seasonal goal or something like that, I would say maybe around 1k Paragon is probably the bare minimum that you want to shoot for. But obviously this is so early in the progression in terms of how much you have farmed at that point 
that it's very high RNG, like what kind of items you have gotten, how high your gems are, they're probably not even leveled yet at 1k paragons. So this kind of assumes like, you know, a well-geared character with 150 gems, full augments, and then you can probably do it at 1k if you play it super well. So obviously if you're not a gold gamer, then the requirement might be a bit higher, but typically we have already seen a lot of 150 clears at quite low paragons and basically a lot of people have been able to achieve this already and if you farm a little bit more then it won't really be such a big deal. The Inas build is very consistent as well so it doesn't really benefit so much from fishing super crazy rifts like most other builds do because you go for rather small pools most of the time so you don't rely on having like a super crazy like big dancy map. In fact this can actually be bad for the build because you don't really deal so much damage on large packs and you'd rather deal more damage to small packs. If you want to see more about how to push this build, I have done a full commentary about my GR150 hardcore clear. So you can go check it out and I talk about the rotation, when I press my buttons, how I pull stuff together and these kind of things in more detail. So go check it out if you like. And finally, the last thing I want to talk about is the T16 and the bounty build. So this is the bounty build here that has infinite dashing strike. So the way that works is you have the Raymond 4 piece bonus which allows you to use dashing strike at a spirit cost instead of a charge cost. And if you have enough spirit regeneration, you can essentially dash all the time, like four times a second, and you don't have to wait for the cooldown. So this is the basic idea here in this setup. You can also play this in just T16 rifts if you don't want to go for like some typical like Ingeon and uh, like Echoing Fury combo, which would look like this here. So that's kind of like the, the standard version, but you can also play this Raymond stuff here if you're doing Nephilim Rifts. So you have to stack a lot of spirit regeneration, resource cost reduction, cooldown reduction, and if you have that on basically every single slot, including uh, replacing crit rolls on your rings and these kind of things, and then you press your buttons a lot, you can essentially perma dash all the time. This is the overall best bounty build in the game. You can probably do a full clear of all five acts solo in average less than 15 minutes if you're fast and in the infinite rifts also this is obviously extremely good because you just blast through in like 30 seconds sometimes a minute maybe and this is about it and this concludes our video here so i hope you enjoyed it and it's gonna help you on your own journey in season 25 personally i had a blast with the main among so far and i'm uh, really looking forward to playing more of it it's super fun if there's anything left unanswered, then feel free to ask away in the comment section or maybe stop by the stream and I can maybe answer in more detail on some things. But uh, for now, I hope this covers most of it and yeah, wish you good luck. So hope you like this video and I'll see you guys next time.